Hello, and welcome to I Know Dino, the, the Big, Big Dinosaur, Dinosaur Podcast, Podcast, where we cover news, interviews, and discussions of all things dinosaur. Hello, and welcome to I Know Dino. I'm Garrett. And I'm Sabrina. And today we'll be talking about Chienjosaurus and some dinosaur news. And I apologize, I have a cold, so I probably sound a little bit odd. First in the news, the first Jurassic-era fossil has been discovered in Hong Kong. And even though it's not a dinosaur fossil, the man who discovered it is a dinosaur expert, and he's hoping to find some dinosaur-related fossils now that they've shown that that area fossilized remains in that time period. So the specific fossil that they found is a small fish fossil that was previously not known to be in the area, and it's actually very far from its previously known range. It's still interesting to people interested in fish but we're hoping as dinosaur enthusiasts that they find some dinosaurs there. A lot of countries have dinosaur fossils in them, and China is definitely no slouch. They have tons of fossils found, and lots of them recently, so it wouldn't be too surprising if Hong Kong discovered some soon. We've mentioned Lisa Glover and her Kit Rex project on the show before, and she's added another item to her Kickstarter page. This time it's a full costume-sized pterodactyl outfit, <laughs> and the wings are seven feet each in length when you wear them, and they fold down to four feet, so I guess you'd have a total wingspan of about 15 feet wearing this thing. It's really cool looking, and she has it on her Kickstarter for $80. I'm kind of tempted to get it. <laughs> It looks pretty fun. If you're familiar with the dinosaur extinction event, you probably know that the crater is called the Chicxulub Crater, named after the city in Mexico on the Yucatan Peninsula where it is centered around. There's a new international research team which has been approved and scheduled by the European Consortium for Oceanic Research Drilling, and that is part of the International Ocean Discovery Program, and the International Continental Scientific Drilling Program is planning to do some new research into the Chicxulub Crater. Specifically, they're planning on measuring the peak ring around the crater center. A peak ring is a specific feature to large impacts on craters, and it's basically a smaller ring inside the edge of the larger outer ring that is left over from the original impact. They're hoping that when they sample this, they'll be able to find the first life that bounced back after the extinction event. The area that they're excavating is about 5,000 feet below the seabed, and any scientists who are interested in joining the mission can apply by May 8th of this year, and it's supposed to take place in 2016. A few of the animals that they might discover while exploring the Chicxulub Crater might surprise you. We've looked at a few recent ones that popped up in an article on the Huffington Post, and one of them is a platypus. The platypus has been around for about 122 million years, which means that it survived the extinction event. Another one that's a lot less surprising is cockroaches, which were originally around about 360 million years ago, although back then they were about twice as big as they are now, which is <laughs> pretty gross. But they also survived the mass extinction, so they might be in the crater. Another extremely old thing that they might see in the Chicxulub crater is the horseshoe crab. It's sometimes described as a living fossil because it's been around for about 450 million years. So that seems like a likely one they could see. Some others are green sea turtles about 200 million years ago, sharks, which were also about 200 million years ago, crocodiles at about 100 million years ago, and bees, which were also about 100 million years ago. So it'll be interesting to see what they find in the crater. One really neat-looking fossil is one that's been dubbed the Romeo and Juliet fossil. It has two oviraptors in it, and they're sort of in an embrace. They're kind of wrapped around each other, and it's a really neat-looking combined fossil, and there's been lots of speculation about whether they were a mating pair if one of them was displaying for the other one and why they were so close to each other. It appears that one was a male and one was a female based on differences in the skeletons, but it'll be interesting to see where the research leads. And last but definitely not least in the news, to quote Brian Switek's book, My Beloved Brontosaurus, Brontosaurus may be back. Thank you to Mark from Minnesota for bringing this piece of news to our attention. For those who don't know, 
Brontosaurus is a dinosaur that was ruled to not be a dinosaur back in 1903. So what happened is in the late 1800s, there were two paleontologists, Cope and Marsh, who were rivals. They started what's now called the Bone Wars, and they took things to an extreme, so much so that they spied in each other's camps and sometimes even destroyed fossils. What they did was they raced to find the most different types of dinosaurs, and in 1879, Marsh wrote about a dinosaur dinosaur that had an 80-foot backbone and a large pelvis, which he named Brontosaurus, and that name in Greek means thunder lizard. However, two years earlier, he had found a very similar-looking dinosaur that he had named Apatosaurus, which means deceptive reptile. And in 1903, scientists ruled that these two skeletons were way too similar to be two different species of the same genus, so they were both grouped under the name Apatosaurus because Apatosaurus was named first. Now, even though this happened in 1903, Brontosaurus is very much a big part of pop culture, and so people who aren't familiar with dinosaurs often think that Brontosaurus is a dinosaur, and it actually made it onto postage stamps in the 1980s, so that didn't help. When I first started getting into dinosaurs, my favorite was Brontosaurus, and I was heartbroken to find out that Littlefoot in The Land Before Time is actually an Apatosaurus. But on Tuesday, April 7th, there were researchers from Portugal and the UK that have published a 300-page paper in the journal Peer J that, among other things, shows strong evidence that Brontosaurus is actually its own distinct species and genus. They use statistical analysis to calculate these differences between the Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus fossils, which many have been found in the past 15 years, and they found that there were enough variations that Brontosaurus was in fact its own dinosaur. So they looked at 49 different fossils, and they found that the Apatosaurus had a bulkier neck, and Brontosaurus was a little more slender and had a longer bone in its ankles. According to Roger Benson, a professor at the University of Oxford and one of the co-authors of the study, he said, quote, The differences we found between Brontosaurus and Apatosaurus were at least as numerous as the ones between other closely related genera, and much more than what you normally find between species. Now, even though this paper was published in a peer journal, there's bound to be controversy. It's been over a hundred years of people correcting people saying, no, Brontosaurus isn't actually a dinosaur. So this may continue to be an issue for a while, but for people whose favorite dinosaur is the Brontosaurus, you can start arguing that it's back. And now for our dinosaur of the day, which is Changosaurus sinensis, a type of tyrannosaur, and its nickname is Pinocchio rex. The name Changosaurus comes from the site where the skeleton was found. Scientists found a nearly complete skeleton at a construction site in the city Ganjo, which is in China, and the ancient name for Ganjo is Chanjo. So it was essentially named for where it was found. And it got a nickname, Pinocchio Rex, because it has such a big nose. The reason that this skeleton was so complete when they found it was because right after it died, it was buried in dirt, which protected it from water and air eroding it. This is according to the study's leader, Zheng Cheng Lu, who's from the Chinese Academy of Geological Sciences in Beijing. And the study was published in Nature Communications in May 2014. So the skeleton that they found has a well-preserved skull, neck, backbone, and tail. And one of the exciting things about the discovery is that Changosaurus proves that there were long-snouted tyrannosaurs. Before Changosaurus, there were two tyrannosaurs with long snouts that had been discovered in Mongolia, but these were of juvenile skeletons, so scientists were not sure if it was a new type of dinosaur or if it was just a juvenile tyrannosaur that would later grow into its long nose. Changisaurus is twice the size of other long-snouted skeletons, which means that it's an adult, and its skull is totally fused and resembles that of an adult T-Rex skull. So there are hundreds of tyrannosaur skulls, and scientists know how these their bones join together and at what age it joins together. Thomas R. Holt Jr., a paleontologist at the University of Maryland who's not affiliated with the study, said that Changosaurus was definitely an adult. Changosaurus had a nose that was 35% longer than other dinosaurs of its size, and its snout was 70% the length of its skull. It had a long, thin snout with many rows of tiny horns on the sides of its snout. This is different than the short, muscular snout on the T-Rex that we're used to seeing. It's unclear why it had this shape of a snout, but it may have helped it hunt differently or helped it bite faster. 
Scientists plan on using computer models to see how Chengisaurus used its snout. Modern animals with long snouts, like crocodiles, use them to catch fish, which we talked about quite a bit with the Spinosaurus, although Chengisaurus doesn't have a snout nearly as long and skinny as Spinosaurus does. Chengisaurus was about 29 feet long and weighed about 1,800 pounds, and as Sabrina mentioned, it's part of the same family as T. rex, which is Tyrannosauridae. Chengisaurus and T. rex lived at the same time in the late Cretaceous, although Chengisaurus was smaller and faster than its cousin, the T. rex, which was 42 feet long compared to 29 feet. Chengisaurus also had a weaker jaw than T. rex, so it had a weaker bite, and it probably ate smaller, easier to catch prey than T. rex, which is considered a, quote, heavy bruiser. So Chengisaurus's bite could not puncture bone like T. rex, but it probably used its more blade-like teeth to cut up its prey. And because Chengisaurus and T. rex ate different foods, they would have lived in harmony with each other. Although no long-snouted tyrannosaurs have been found in the Americas, where Chengisaurus lived in what is now China had lots of food. Its habitat had lots of trees and water and was home to lizards, oval raptors, and sauropods. And different tyrannosaurs may have lived and hunted alongside each other in Asia during the late Cretaceous. Because of the discovery of Chianjusaurus, scientists have named a new branch of the Tyrannosaur family, a clad called Aleoramini. This clad includes Chianjusaurus and the two other long-snouted species, the ones that were found in Mongolia, and they're called Aleoramus. All of these dinosaurs have elongated skulls, and because of them, scientists think there may be even more long-snouted Tyrannosaurs that have not been discovered yet. And our fun fact of the day is the dinosaur with the longest name was found in China in 1978 by paleontologist Dong Jiming. Jiming named the dinosaur Micropachycephalosaurus. It's an ornithischian, and its name means tiny, thick-headed lizard. You probably have seen pachycephalosaurs, the ones who butt heads semi-controversially. So this is a smaller version. And that wraps up this episode of I Know Dino. If you like what you hear, please leave us a review on iTunes. Thanks for listening, and until next time. Thank you for listening to I Know Dino. If you have any questions or comments about dinosaurs, we'd like to hear from you at plesiosaur at iknowdino.com. And for more information on dinosaurs, go to iknowdino.com or follow us on Google, Facebook, Tumblr, or Twitter at iknowdino.